Mrs H here. This video is going to show you how to determine the glucose concentration of an unknown using a calibration curve plotted from known glucose concentrations. So let's get to it. First we need to make up a cereal dilution. We are given a stock solution of 1% glucose concentration and need to dilute this by half each time. We will end up with the following concentrations. Of course, we'll have our 1%, then our 0.5%, 0.25%, 0.13% and 0.06%. To keep the volumes as simple as possible, we will measure out 10 centimeters cubed of the 1% glucose solution into the first glass tube. And these glass tubes are ideal for making cereal dilutions because we can actually get our syringes right into them. Transfer 5 cm cubed of the 1% concentration into the next tube and add 5 cm cubed of water. Because we've diluted the 1% by half, we now have 0.5% glucose solution. Then from this tube, take 5 cm cubed and put into the next tube and add 5 cm cubed of distilled water diluting by half again. So this tube will contain 0.25% glucose solution. Continue with the cereal dilution to make 0.13% and 0.06%. And now you have five known concentrations that have been made using a cereal dilution technique. So here you can see the cereal dilution being carried out. Make sure you use different syringes for the water and the solution and ensure your tubes are labeled. Next, you need to label five boiling tubes with the same concentrations, but you will also have an extra tube for an unknown solution, which will label X and distilled water. The distilled water will be your 0.0% glucose solution. So you should have a total of seven boiling tubes. Add two centimeters cubed of each concentration to the corresponding boiling tubes. You will also need to add two centimeters cubed of the unknown solution and two centimeters cubed of the distilled water. Then add five centimeters cubed of Benedict's reagent to each tube and place in a hot water bath set around 80 degrees C for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, take the tubes out of the water bath. Remember that glucose is a reducing sugar. So it reduces the copper two plus ions in the Benedict's reagent to copper one plus and these copper one plus ions come out of solution to form a precipitate. The higher the glucose concentration, the more precipitate there will be. At this point in the method, we could use a centrifuge to force the precipitate to the bottom of the tube, but I don't have one of those. So I'm going to have to leave this to settle for 24 hours. On this piece of paper, you can see that I have placed eight cuvettes next to labels, the six concentrations and the unknown, and one cuvette for just distilled water with no Benedict's reagent. Notice that the cuvette has two clearer sides and two translucent sides. Using a dropping pipette, you need to carefully pipette up the clear solution that is above the precipitate. You must not disturb the precipitate because we've just spent 24 hours waiting for it to settle to the bottom. So if you squeeze the pipette before you put it into the boiling tube and then release it once it's in the liquid, you can carefully draw up the clear solution. Make sure that the end of the pipette doesn't stir up the precipitate at the bottom. Then pipette this into the cuvette and repeat for all the concentrations. 
And finally, you'll put distilled water into the last cuvette. That, this is so you can use this one as a reference to calibrate the colorimeter. This is a colorimeter. It can either be used to measure how much light is absorbed by the solution in the cuvette or how much light can pass through. We are going to measure the percentage of transmission of light through the solution. We need to put the distilled water in first and be sure to place the clear sides of the cuvette so that the light is passing through the clear sides and not the translucent sides. Then we press R to set the colorimeter to 100% transmission of light. Now you don't need to do that again. You now need to measure the percentage of light that passes through each concentration. So put the 0% into the colorimeter and press T. Record your result. Then 0.06%, press T and record your result. And continue for all the concentrations, including the unknown. Once you have your results, you need to plot a graph and a calibration curve. The independent variable must go on the x-axis. Keep the scale nice and simple. I've gone up in 0.2s every 10 squares and the y-axis is from 0 to 100% again in a nice simple scale, 10 per 10 squares, so up in ones. Plot your points and either do a straight line of best fit or a curve of best fit. It depends what your results look like. If you look at my results, they do look like a nice curve of best fit. So that's what I'm going to do. Once we have our curve, we can then use it to find out the concentration of our unknown glucose solution. Now the unknown allowed 17% of light to transmit through. So find 17% on the y-axis, draw a dashed line until it hits the curve, then draw a dashed line down towards the x-axis and read off the concentration. This curve shows that the concentration of the unknown solution was 0.16%. There you go. That is how you use the calibration curve to determine an unknown. I hope you found this useful. Please like and subscribe for more content and check out biologybreakdown.co.uk.